Hey, Steve Stretsky here, as always, the Canadian Real Estate Market Update with a particular focus on Vancouver. If you get any sort of value or entertainment out of these videos, I ask you to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Questions, comments, put those below. Uh, before we get into this week's video, the Soretsky Report for November 2019 is now available. Uh, so there'll be a link to that in the description below. Uh, highly encourage you to check it out. Um, Again, very detailed sort of analysis on the Vancouver housing market for basically the, the months of November. So essentially, uh, if you want um, this video and my thoughts in written words, um, that's basically the report for you. Uh, but I want to get into first off on the the Bank of Canada coming out earlier this past week, um, basically saying that they're on hold, that they believe uh, the economy is in a good place and that they are more than happy to basically diverge from the US and what the Federal Reserve is doing. So two different monetary policy regimes, which I think, um, you know, they might say for now, but I think that they're gonna see a significant pivot into 2020. I mean, I will commend them for not capitulating like every other central bank in the world, but I think it's only a matter of time until the slowdown and the weakness from the global economy permeates through into the Canadian economy, uh, which, I mean, lo and behold, the November uh, jobs numbers in Canada, we actually saw the single largest monthly decline in employment. Uh, so we lost 71,000 jobs in the month of November. Uh, the unemployment rate actually jumped from 5.5% to 5.9%. Uh, so obviously not good news on that front, but I will say with a grain of salt, as I have said in the past, uh, when when jobs numbers were going up that this jobs data is so noisy that uh, it's almost irrelevant to look at it on a month-to-month -month basis but um, two consecutive months in of contracting uh, labor force for Canada so we'll have to wait and see uh, how things progress on that front obviously it was a huge miss and I suspect that the Bank of Canada is uh, probably wincing uh, after that report and uh, having known that just the day before they would come out and basically said that uh, they were going to remain essentially on hold for what they believe is the foreseeable future. So uh, uh, my bet is still on the Bank of Canada having to cut rates uh, in lockstep with what uh, particularly the Fed has done. So uh, speaking of which, uh, we also got news that Stephen Polos, the Bank of Canada governor, uh, will step down after his term uh, expires in June 2020 so uh, I mean kudos to him uh, I mean personally I think a central banking is a thankless job and I think that uh, I certainly wouldn't want to be in his position uh, in the ne over the next couple years because I think if you thought if you think or thought monetary policy was crazy and kind of out of whack today I think it's just it's just getting started uh, I think that we can clearly see the path that the Fed is going down with their uh, don't call it QE, QE4 uh, process, basically ballooning the balance sheet um, to keep uh, the cycle going and basically to keep financial assets elevated. That is essentially the mandate of the Federal Reserve, whether or not they tell you or not, their goal is basically to increase the assets. So in, after the financial crisis, as you had all this debt and a drop in asset prices, they needed to get that mismatch of asset prices back up, hence the flooding of money into the system to then prop up asset prices. So the name of the game is to keep the stock market going, to keep asset prices going, to keep housing going. And we are seeing that, which we'll I'll get into the Vancouver housing market here, but this is a global reflation trade. The trade right now is global reflation. So we're seeing this in numerous uh, housing indexes, not just in Canada or Vancouver, but you're seeing that um, in the US actually. The uh, Black, uh, it was, was it Black, Black Knight uh, home price index in the US actually had its largest acceleration in I believe six years on a month over month basis in November. So you're seeing home prices in the US start to accelerate. Um, you're obviously seeing the S&P 500 hit new all time highs. Um, so this reflation trade, this calm in the markets that uh, central banks uh, are sort of fueling and propelling is, is allowing asset prices to rise uh, again, to keep things uh, to keep things moving forward, and so again, if we want to strip that black back now on a on a micro level, um, we can see that in Vancouver, uh, we had home sales 
across Greater Vancouver jumped 55% on a year-over-year -year basis in the month of November. Obviously, again, that's coming off very weak base effects. Uh, November 2018 was one of the worst Novembers that we've had on record. So you're comparing it to a very weak year. So keep that 55% number uh, take that with a grain of salt, uh, but regardless, we've actually seen basically sales normalize to right around the 10 year averages that you would typically expect for the month of November. And that's been sort of the trend or the case over the past several months. So um, if you wanna look at home price indexes uh, in Greater Vancouver, so let's just take the detached, for example, uh, down I believe 5.8% on a year over year basis, but that decline is now starting to, to re-accelerate towards, closer towards the zero bound. So the, the rate of decline is slowing. Um, and so that, if you take that trajectory, uh, you should see, assuming all things stay the same, everything stays the same, which is probably unlikely to happen, you would expect to see the year-over-year -year increase uh, in detached prices to be positive, uh, probably in mid to sort of mid 2020 or early uh, sort of the later part of the first quarter of 2020. So, uh, and that's going to be the same thing for the condo prices. If you look at the ho uh, home price index or condos, the rate of change, condo prices fell 3.8 percent. But again understand things in rate of change terms. So how quickly are things changing? Uh, so for example, if you looked at um, the home price index for condos um, even three months ago, I would have told you that condo prices were down 6% year over year. Well, now they're only down 3.8. So you can see that the, the, the rate of the change is starting to accelerate towards the upside. And again, we should probably expect, again, assuming all things stay the same, you'll see condo prices uh, on a positive year-over-year -year increase in the early parts of 2020. And now, again, this assumes all things stay the same. This assumes that, that this recent hiccup in the Canadian labor market is just a hiccup, that it's not something, it's not the start of something significant. Um, it's assuming that the Fed continues to engage in quantitative easing for um, and financial assets globally continue to uh, you know elevate and keep the things keep things moving. So uh, those are questions that obviously nobody has an answer to. But I think if you want to get a consensus on what's happening, everybody is aware and can agree that global growth is slowing. That central bank monetary policy. Um, is egregious and it's only getting crazier. So I think that everyone can certainly agree on that. Now, whether what are the outcomes of these two things uh, remains to be seen uh, in the near term. Obviously, um, I think that's that's pretty straightforward. But what I can tell you today, again, from that micro level, is that you are seeing that reflation trade play on in, in various asset classes. So financial conditions have eased thanks to global central banks. So the Bank of Canada is just a tiny little smidgen uh, in terms of impacting actual policy here in Canada. They are actually more of, they basically import their monetary policy from other countries, essentially. Um, what you're seeing is Canadians now are starting to essentially borrow money again. So you actually had mortgage credit growth on a three month annualized basis is now growing or accelerating um, at its fastest pace um, since 2017. It's actually growing, so mortgage credit growth, residential mortgage credit growth, i.e. the amount of money that people are essentially borrowing to purchase housing, uh, is growing faster than it did before the B20 mortgage stress test. So uh, all those calls or suggestions to ease or amend or remove the B20 mortgage stress test um, I think are quietly falling by the wayside because the fact that residential credit growth is now accelerating even faster than it did before those policies kind of goes to show you that uh, I think that policymakers such as uh, CMHC's Evans et al. is not going to be overly enthused um, that how quickly the pace of growth is growing and not only that but you're seeing still uh, rising home prices uh, in Ontario and in, in Toronto in Ottawa in Montreal in, in many parts of Canada still um, so I think that's that's something that we'll be watching but again all we have is essentially data points and all we can do is 
continue to monitor those data points and use those data points to make the best decision possible of where we are. So um, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I find it interesting from an anecdotal perspective to see um, how things have changed in this market. So in the first six months of 2019, almost every realtor that you talk to uh, was in the belief that prices were going to continue to fall. So if you were making an offer and negotiating, um, every realtor would be like, "Well, we'll offer you 900 because you know in six months it'll be worth 875 or 850," and that was an easy case to sell. Uh, now you're starting to see the reverse, where every realtor was like, "Well, we're actually going to hold firm on our price because." As you can see, the market's rebounding, and clearly, obviously, prices are gonna be higher next year, uh, which I think, obviously, they're extrapolating uh, recent performance of just three or four months, um, but that is the prevailing mindset, which obviously permeates and gets passed down to the client. Um, same thing I heard with a, um, a property developer is gonna be launching a project here in Vancouver uh, shortly, and they're saying, they're going, well, you know, um, I heard that the market's picking up. Even these guys are just basically headline readers. I heard the market's picking up, so we actually want to launch at this price. You know, it was like, like thirteen fifty a square foot, and uh, like our, the marketing marketing firm in our office is like, ah, yeah, probably not. Um, just because you read a couple of headlines, like, doesn't mean you can start extrapolating forward. Um, so I don't know. I just find that interesting to sort of see how quickly mindsets and mentality can shift on uh, basically just a few headlines. But uh, overall, the news has been positive, continues to be positive. That reflation trade continues to play, uh, but we'll have to wait and see if those data points uh, begin to change. So hope that video helped. Otherwise, see you next week.